So today I kind of want to talk about something interesting. And it just really hit home when I started seeing a lot of people post about pool rate data. Now, here's the thing about pool rate data is it's never truly accurate. As much as we want to use pool rate data to believe in our chances of pulling a certain card, 8,000 packs is only a small fraction of the amount of packs that are open throughout the Pokemon TCG space. There are thousands upon thousands and probably millions upon millions of packs open every year. And you're just going to have way too many packs opened up for any pool rate data to be reliable. On top of that, a lot of people believe there's things such as batching where certain cards are pulled more highly in certain batches of product than they are in other batches of product. So it's hard to say whether or not pool, day, uh, pool rate data is reliable. But I've seen people recently kind of talk about pull rate data and how it can influence prices. And I wanted to talk about how like pull rate data is used very selectively to influence prices. And what do I mean by that? Well, here's the mo one of the more recent pull rate data I have on screen. This is temporal forces pull rates. I want to point out that your rate at pulling any hyper rare in the set, any individual hyper rare is one out of 139. Now, it's 1 out of 836 to pull a specific Hyper Rare, but to pull that individual Hyper Rare, let's say you want the Raging Bolt EX, is 1 out of 139. When we look at an SIR, any SIR has a 1 out of 86 chance. With a specific SIR, having a 1 out of an 855 chance. So, your chances of pulling an SIR that you would like is about the same as pulling a specific HR that you would like. A, a 20 card difference, which if you think about statistics, that's not a massive differential. Especially if it's 1 out of 836 versus 1 out of 855. But your chances of pulling an SIR are drastically higher than your chances to pull an HR. Not including anything with illustration rares, anything with regular full art ultra rares or A-specs. We're specifically going to focus on gold cards versus SIRs. And the reason why I wanted to focus on this is because of the massive price differential between the two. Looking at temporal forces, right? I pulled up the gold cards here. Here's Iron Boulder. This is your lowest Pokemon SIR in the set of temporal forces. And it sits about $20, give or take. Sure, you could find some Japanese ones, but we're focusing on English only. And the lowest copy available is from Mystic TCG at 1959. Your lowest SIR altogether sits at about $14, and this is going to be from Mystic as well. This is Salvatore. Unfortunately, as much as I love the artwork from Salvatore, it is unfortunate to see this card so low because it is a brilliant artwork. But this is the lowest SIR in the set. Now let's compare this to the highest and the lowest Hyper Rares in the set. Your highest Hyper Rare is going to be Raging Bolt EX. Ignore the direct by TCG player prices because the direct by TCG player prices that they promote right here in this box are always ridiculous. $16, $17. So slightly above Salvatore by $3. Uh, about $3 below your Iron Boulder. And this is Raging Bolt, which is the top card in the set in terms of playability right now. Raging Bolt EX. Uh, the SIR is the top card in the set, sitting somewhere between $80 to $90 USD. And compared to this, this is only about a fourth of the price, a little bit less than a fourth of the price of your SIR version of this card. Same card playability-wise, but the SIR has such a drastic price difference. And another great comparison of that is Iron Boulder EX at $20 for the SIR versus... About $8, about $12 lower for the Hyper Rare. Now, my, the point I'm making here is if somebody is going to use pool rate data as a justification for a card shooting up in price, shouldn't that have happened with the gold cards as well? If the gold cards are just as hard, if not harder to pull, look at this. One out of 139 for any Hyper Rare. You would think that pool rate data would mean that these gold cards would see a little bit of a shoot up in price. But if we look at these gold cards, while this one has gone up because of playability, they have all held a pretty low price overall. 
especially cards like Iron Boulder here, who's kind of hold consistently at the $8 to $10 range. It has started out low. It had a very small dip at the beginning, slightly went up, and has held consistent. You could say that this is a slight climb after pull rate data, but it's about a $1 to $2 difference from what we're seeing as the lowest here. Now, I want to point this out because this has been a common trend with a lot of cards. Look at the pull rate data from Silver Tempest posted by TCG Player. And remember, these are data rates that are put and people use these to manipulate the market in ways to boost the price of certain cards. Lugia held a pretty solid price. It's gone down over time, shot back up a bit. It's been all over the place. Reggie Drago, Skuntank, both very low in alternate arts. And Skuntank in this data is the hardest of the four to pull. Serena was just as hard as Lugia to pull in this data. Yet Serena was about a fourth of the price of Lugia on release. And it is a waifu trainer, which they are very popular. Rayquaza, same thing. The Rayquaza VMAX, about the four, a fourth of the price of Lugia when the set released. More importantly, the other two Lugias were harder to hit. The Gold Lugia and the Hyper Rare Lugia. And these cards, while the alternate art Lugia sat at 200 plus, these cards sat under the $50 price tag were not manipulated in any way, never shot up to ridiculous prices. And they showed that their data on the data here that were presented, the data that people like to use, these cards show up as much, much harder to pull than your alternate art. Look at Astral Radiance. The two hardest cards to pull in this data were the two gold cards, the gold card Palkia and the gold card Dialga. Machamp was also very hard to pull. When this data posted, two of these cards shot up in value. And it wasn't the two gold cards that were harder to pull than Machamp. Machamp shot up in value, got spiked up. And Hisuian Sneasler V got shot up. Hisuian Sneasler V, I was actually happy to see this card go up a little bit in value. Because I felt it was a very underappreciated, under, underrated card. But the two gold cards didn't shoot up in price equivalent to how these two cards shot up even though the data shows that these two cards were harder to pull than the Machamp. We look at Obsidian Flames. Gita is just as hard, if not harder to pull, than any of these cards here. Out of all these cards on this page, guess which one is the cheapest, the easiest to get, the cheapest to buy? It is Gita, which you can get for about $3 for a special illustration rare. Gita for a special illustration rare at $3 has gone drastically down. We don't even see launch release data where it was sitting at about $15, but it has just gone down in the past couple of months from a 350 high down to 260. So it is still creeping down. It's still going downwards, even though it, the data here showed out of 8,000 packs that Gita, it ended up being as hard to pull as the Charizard Illustration Rare. Harder to pull than any of the other Charizards. Harder to pull than Titar. Harder to pull than Pidgeot. Harder to pull than Ninetales or Cleffa. Now, you can argue that Gita is not as playable as Pidgeot. Pidgeot deserves its uh, price tag. And the same with these Zards. I know the Zards were playable for quite a while. So maybe you can make that argument. But you can't make that argument for Ninetales, Cleffa, or Titar. So it's interesting to see this happen. Scar uh, Scarlet and Violet, the base pull rates. The gold cards, just as hard if not harder to pull than a lot of the SIRs that hold that held good value when the set released. Now, as the set has aged, the set has aged very poorly in terms of value. But Gyarados, Coridon, and Maridon, just as hard to pull as any of these SIRs. And the hardest card to pull out of this data with 8,000 Scarlet and Violet packs was Coridon EX. Not Miriam, not Gardevoir, not Maridon, but Coridon. One of the lower end SIRs in the set. One of the cards that does not hold an extreme value right now. And you can get the three of the harder cards to pull out of Scarlet and Violet for less than $10. You can buy both of these golds and Gyarados probably for about $10 or less for all three of them. I know this Gyarados alone you can find for like $3 on the market at the moment. And Crydon, same thing. Crydon's not very expensive. Even though it takes you 300 and something packs on average to pull this card, these cards did not shoot up in value 
as the SIRs did. This one I wanted to bring up because this one becomes very interesting. We see Mew here, hardest to pull out of any of the cards on this list according to the 4,000 pack data. This means that Mew VMAX should have been the highest card in terms of value. But both Espeon VMAX and Gengar VMAX shot up above Mew VMAX. The interesting thing is, is if you look at this data right here, Inteleon and Gengar are the same in terms of uh, pull rate data. But yet one of these held a tremendous value and one of these was very low end for the longest time. Inteleon. Inteleon was a very low end card for the longest time. It was actually harder to pull than UV, Celebi V, and Genesect V. And at one point in time, this card, Inteleon, was below Mu V Max, Genesect V, Celebi V, and Mu V. It was only more expensive than the Elisa Sparkle. Paldean Fades. It is harder to pull an, S an HR than it is an SIR. And your specific HRs, a little bit easier to get a specific HR than it is an SIR, but the chances of pulling either of these in this pull rate data for 1500 Paldean Fate booster packs are pretty even. Yet most of these HRs sit under the $10 price tag, while a lot of these SIRs have a much higher price tag. Some of these H uh, SIRs are pretty low compared to uh, like other sets, such as the Nimona, such as the Penny but they still hold a good value in comparison to the HRs. And these HRs were unique. They were something different. They weren't your typical gold cards that we're used to seeing. They had this raised foil effect. They had that nice, beautiful blue background. And they represented legendary Pokemon, which usually are fan favorites. And unfortunately, they did not hold value. I think Chi and Pao being the most expensive, around $14. So... What is my point with this video? My point is, is that if you look at the pool rate data that has been presented for set after set after set, and then you see the market get manipulated, a certain card get bought out, that card is not being targeted just because the pool rate data says it's low. Because there are other cards who have a low pool rate data that could be targeted as well. There are cards with even harder pool rate data. Going back to, where is it, Astral Radiance. There are cards with much higher pull rate data that should be targeted if somebody is thinking that pull rate data should matter. But they're not being targeted. What it is, is that they're choosing the cards that have a hard pull rate data that is being presented by, let's say, TCG Player or Danny Phantom, and they're combining it with other things such as the Pokemon on the card, such as the artist who did the card, to manipulate the market. That brings me to Paldean Fates, which I do not have up here, and what are not Paldean Fates, Paldea Evolved, and what has been going on with that set recently, where the market uh, the market has been manipulated for the Magikarp and for uh, Chi Yu recently, where these cards are seeing a lot of manipulation, and it is a combination of effects, and it's not just the pool rate data that matters, and it gets irritating that a lot of the justification for that market manipulation goes back to, well, it's just harder to pull because that's not always the case because there are cards that are harder than that card to pull, but you are uh, specifically marking that card out because you know that card, when you scarce the market of that card, it's going to create a higher artificial demand for that card, at least for the time being. And eventually that card does drop over time. Look at Chiyu. Chiyu got bought out, went up to $65. Chiyu uh, from Paldea Evolved. Now that card sits below 40 again. I think I've seen copies of the card already below 30 now. And this was only a couple weeks ago where it was sitting at $65. So when we see pool rate data like this, guys, we got to take it with a grain of salt. Because once again, these 8,000 packs are only so much of that data. And people use this data and this data actually hurts the market in a lot of ways because people wait for this data and they use it immediately to manipulate the market. So guys, 
I don't want, I don't know what the ultimate goal is of this video. Maybe just being informative, maybe just talking about the issue, but it was something that kind of just crossed my mind. And it was something that I just started thinking about because I seen this on X slash Twitter slash whatever the hell you want to call Elon Musk's playground. But it was just interesting to see somebody defending the idea of a card being higher in price because it was uh, harder to pull. And I think it was the conversation about a raging bolt and how raging bolt went up to like a hundred dollars at one point. But if we look here, the raging bolt gold is just as hard to pull, but raging bolt gold isn't getting manipulated like raging bolt SIR. So I just want to talk about this for a little bit. That's it guys. I'll see ya.